In this video, we will introduce the idea of a geometric gradient. First, I'll start out by introducing the concept that underlies the idea of a geometric gradient, and then we'll get into solving a sample problem after. So, like I start many videos, I'd like to start with a, a cash flow diagram. So, if we think of a typical cash flow diagram with some payments, if I have a series of payments that look like this, where instead of increasing at a constant rate, like the, like the arithmetic gradient, if I have one that increases at a growth rate, um, this is what we call a geometric gradient. And the pattern on the cash flow diagram looks something like this, where we start out with a certain value that we call A. Um, it's not really an annuity, it's really the starting value or the base value for the growth curve. Um, what we then see is that as, the, as we go step by step through the time periods, we actually increase the amount of the payment by a factor of 1 plus g, where this g we define as the growth rate. And you can see after the, in the first period, period 1, we have a payment of a. In period 2, we have a payment of a times 1 plus g. In period 3, we would have a times 1 plus g squared. And the series continues on uh, like this. It's also possible for us to have a series of payments that looks like this, where we have kind of the opposite, where we have what's called a negative growth. This would be a, a sample of positive growth. This would be a sample of negative growth. And it turns out that we can use the same formulas um, to find a value of P that is equivalent to either one of these types of geometric series. And again, even with the negative growth, our first payment is defined as A. Now, in the same type of functional notation that we introduced uh, when we introduced the concept of um, compound interest factors, we introduce a notation related to geometric growth that, that looks something like this. P, right, that's what we're looking for here, P given A, G by N, this becomes our notation for a series of payments that has some growth rate. Now, we don't have tables to solve for, for this. If you, if you look in the back of a, a finance or engineering economics textbook, we only find tables that have I. So we can find factors for P given A, I, N, but if we had to generate tables that had all combinations of G's and I's for this factor, we'd have a gigantic number of tables. And even then, we may not end up having the one that we need to solve a certain problem. So we introduced the idea of something called um, uh, a uh, growth corrected or uh, growth adjusted interest rate. And I'll define it like this. If I say 1 plus I naught, where I naught becomes this, this growth adjusted interest rate, you can say that that is equal to 1 plus I divided by 1 plus G. So we'll just define this growth adjusted interest rate like this. If I want to calculate the actual rate, I can bring the one over to the other side. But as you can see, it relates. Um, we, we use the, the value of I that we're given in the problem, and we use the value of G. By the way, in, in a problem like this, in both of these cases, we still have some underlying I. We're not going to solve for it, but any problem will have still this I that's used in the time value of money calculations, the G or the growth rate really just relates to the, uh, the change in the value of the payments over time, either a positive growth rate or a negative growth rate. So we always still have the I in the time value of money calculations. 
Introducing a concept like this allows us to come up with a compound interest factor that we can actually use from our tables. So we can write um, P given A I naught N divided by one plus G. This now becomes something we can go to our tables uh, to find the solution for because now we have a, a single interest rate. And as long as I take whatever factor I find from the table, divide it by one plus the growth rate, I can find the equivalent compound interest factor that will allow me to solve for the P in either of these two types of problems. So um, sometimes, maybe even more often than not, we end up with an I that is not a nice round number. We don't have a table, let's say, for the I. And in that instance, you would need to use the formula for P given A. Um, and I should maybe, maybe just write it here. Um, so if you did have to use the formula for P given A, uh, it would look like this. 1 plus I naught to the N minus 1 divided by I naught times 1 plus I naught to the N. And then all of this would be multiplied by 1 over 1 plus G. So if we find ourselves in a situation where we don't have uh, a nice table friendly number for I naught, we have to resort to using the uh, equation. You may recognize this as simply the P given A compound interest factor. A couple of notes on this before we get into the problem. We have to be a little bit careful about the relationship between the interest rate and the G. And if we solve this for our I naught, and if we find that I naught ends up as a positive number, if we end up with I naught as a positive number, that's okay, because now we can either use the tables or we can use the formula. And that might seem like a, a somewhat redundant thing to say, but um, you can see where I'm probably leading. I can also end up with an I naught that's negative. And if I end up with an I naught that's negative, you can see that there's no interest tables for negative numbers. And if that's the case, when I solve for I naught with my I and my G, I must use the formula. And the formula works uh, for a negative value of I naught, it's just that I cannot go to a table. Well, if I naught has the ability to be positive or negative, then it also follows that I naught might in some cases be zero. And the case where I naught becomes zero, the formula sort of collapses and we can, we can solve for a P uh, quite simply as P being equal to the number of periods times the A divided by one plus G. And if you think about this formula for a moment, all this is doing is taking the value of A, discounting it at the growth rate for one period, and then we're just multiplying by the number of payments because our interest rate is exactly balanced by the growth rate. So in the special case where I equals zero, uh, we can solve for P using this modified or simplified formula. So keeping all of this in mind, take a moment, pause the video, read the problem, and when you're ready to see the solution, restart the video. Okay, so in the problem involving the geometric gradient, we can read the problem and determine a couple of things. The first thing we determine is that um, the first month's revenue for this company uh, we'll call A, and we can determine that uh, it is $8,000. And I won't bother drawing another cash flow diagram. In fact, the cash flow diagram is going to look a lot like this one, just with different periods. We also notice in this problem that the time periods are not years, they are in fact months. So um, the, time, the overall time 
for the problem, we say it's two years, um, but really I have to say it's two times 12 or 24. So our n for this problem will be 24 because the frequency of our payments in this case, or in this case, the revenue uh, from these manufacturing operations uh, will be monthly. Now we're also told in the problem that the monthly revenue grows at a rate of 0.25% per month. And we're also told that there is an underlying interest rate of 1.5% per month. And quite conveniently for this problem, our payments are now, payments, our revenue is now uh, monthly, so the cash flows are monthly, the growth rate we have as a monthly rate, and the interest rate we have as a monthly rate. So to solve this problem, really what we're going to try to do is find the present value of two years worth of monthly revenues that grow at a quarter percent per month with an underlying interest rate of 1.5 percent per month. So really what we're doing is we're finding P for 24 periods of a growing series uh, of revenue. So the first step in solving this problem uh, is really to find our I naught. So if we solve for I naught, like I said over here, we can solve for I naught by simply bringing the one on to the other side of this equation. Of one plus I over one plus G minus one. So for this problem, uh, this problem we end up with um, well, I can just write it like this, uh, 1.015 divided by 1.0025 minus 1. We end up with um, 0 0.01247, and we're going to call that 1.25%. Uh, it's, not, it's not exactly right. Um, but just in the interest of simplicity, we're going to assume that the uh, uh, growth adjusted interest rate turns out to be 1.5%. Now, if we have the, the, the growth adjusted interest rate, um, really we're just back to this kind of a situation where I can write down the value of P. So the value of P is going to be equal to A times the p given a factor with a g and an i and an n, but we've already calculated an i naught, so I can write it as a is equal to p given a i naught n divided by 1 plus g. And if I do this for this problem, I can start, I can plug the numbers in, we would have 8,000, which is our first starting revenue amount, times the P given A factor for 1.25% for 24 periods, divided by uh, 1.0025. So if you do the math and work this out, in fact, this factor uh, you'll find in your tables this factor is 20.624, right? So if we plug 20.624 into this factor, we end up with a value of P equal to 164,580 dollars. And that's somewhat approximate because we did approximate the I naught but probably within a few dollars of the actual amount. So in this problem, we have um, used this concept of a geometric gradient to solve for the present value of a geometrically increasing uh, series of cash flows.